Well, I've been asked to uh, give some ob observations about foreign reporting and how it's changed. And in some ways it has really changed, and in other more fundamental ways, I'd say, it hasn't changed at all. One way in which it has changed enormously uh, is the, the technical side of things and the amount of equipment that has to be carried. And of course, that's, that has implications on the news gathering process because it, it determines where you can go and how long it takes you to get there and how many vehicles you need. Logistics are all a big part of this business. I am, by the way, in Kabul at the moment, um, sitting in the lovely garden of the Serena Hotel where most foreign journalists stay when they're here. Um, we can hear the city outside, uh, but we can't see it because it's surrounded by high blast walls and uh, big steel gates and security is provided by the Taliban. So at the moment, so far, so good. Um, so on the, I'll give you an example about how things have changed on the, the technical side. Uh, first time I came here, which was 1989, uh, just to be able to, uh, to broadcast from the TV station, uh, we brought with us uh, a thousand kilos of gear a ton. We had a lorry to pick us up at the airport and in that thousand kilos there was uh, hundreds of meters of uh, cabling because we had two engineers as part of our team who had to go to the TV station basically to rewire it before we could feed any material. This time around essentially the amount of equipment that um, Fred Scott who's filming this has brought with him when we went down to the south to, uh, to do some stuff in Kandahar and in the Taliban um, heartland of, of Helmand. I think you took, you took one flight case, Fred? Yeah, one case, one, one tripod. One case, there you go. One case, one tripod, which you didn't use. Um, so that is the difference. And we sent our piece, we edited and cut and sent it from there. So that is a massive difference in terms of flexibility. During the war in Croatia, in 1991 we used to go off to the front line and come herring back uh, to Zagreb because that's where the European Broadcasting Union, the EBU, had its dish. So that meant two, three hours of traveling in either direction every day, getting up at four o'clock and I mean the good thing was you got to sleep in your own bed and got a decent dinner if you got back in time but it was an awful lot of traveling and it cut down the amount of time you had to work when you got there. And that clearly is important for the news gathering process so that side the gear side has changed beyond recognition and of course then we were on tape and now it's digital etc 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 we used to send on satellites now other things safety much more conscious of that I'd, I'd say and my argument would be is that foreign reporting has become more dangerous in the years since I've been doing it I joined the BBC in 1984 and I've been on the road as a correspondent since 87. Um, and, uh, you know, there used to be a chance, I'd say, that you could be treated as a non-combatant. But now, I think that's completely gone. Uh, journalists are very much associated in the minds of people who might want to do us harm with the countries that we come from, almost as if we're representatives of the government, which clearly we're not. Uh, the first war I went to, which was El Salvador in 1989, uh, everybody had, uh, all the journalists had, had white flags which they waved when they wanted to do something like cross a road in a dangerous area and they'd shout out periodista, which is Spanish for journalist. And miraculously, usually, the shooting would be directed somewhere else. Journalists did get killed there very tragically, but there was this feeling that we were not part of the fray and now that has completely changed in the, the Bosnia years in the 90s I felt it it changing and it's particularly marked I think in the era of 24-7 uh, news reporting uh, and the the wired connected digital world because people want to have an impact on the world's media agenda what's on the news that day and a very good way of doing it can be to knock off a journalist if a journalist is the the closest possible representative of if you like the enemy state 